Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. So, a while ago, in the summer, I did a series of videos on the Samcom radios. Um, so the first one I did was the Samcom FPC Antennae, which was a UHF handheld, which had the group function which basically meant that you could operate numerous groups so on a handheld you could talk to one group using the main PTT and then the group button would activate a secondary PTT on a different frequency and you could then in theory run numerous groups off of one radio so you could just switch between channels switch between groups and um, you could have large networks of analog radios on the system so it was quite handy and I also did a review of the FTAN30A which was the desktop console for UHF which is quite a nice little bit of equipment sort of reminiscent of the old Charmin PMR sets from back in the late 90s early 2000s so the um, F PC antenna. It was quite a nice little radio, quite rugged in design, um, very similar to the UV82 uh, in terms of the battery and things like that. Uh, group function was a nice positive, but it only outputted just around 2 watts. Now I always say in a lot of my videos that power doesn't necessarily mean anything. So if you're if you're talking sort of longer range or open distances, the difference between 5 watts and 8 watts for example is very very little and um, the difference between 2 watts and 5 watts in those conditions isn't great but when you're in a more built up area um, and there's more obstructions in the way and operating conditions are slightly more difficult the difference between um, 2 watts and 5 watts is quite um, it, it does you know it, it does make a difference so you know if you're operating into a repeater um, on 2 watts and 5 watts you would you know more than likely get into the repeater slightly better if you were in a bit of a built up area on the 5 watt option so in front of me is exactly that this is the 5 watt version of the radio this is the FPCN 30A from Samcom so I've got a pair of these in front of me and what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to have a look inside the box we'll look at the setup and assembly we'll look at the programming and of course we'll do a test on these things so I've got the box in front of me if we just open it up On the top there we've got the manual. Now these radios are quite simple to use so we're not going to go into the manual um, but basically this gives you some troubleshooting options, setup, button layout and things like that but as we go through this video you'll see they're really um, you know, quite straightforward to use. Um, operating frequency on these radios is 400 to 480 megahertz on UHF. They are programmable and one of the other point of differences on this radio as opposed to the FPC antennae is that it has a frequency readout. So the FPC antennae just had a channel readout so if you've got multiple channels in your radio you, you would need a cheat sheet to show you what was what. With this it gives you the um, frequency. There's no alpha tag option so you can't name the channels but if you're for example for me a radio amateur operator I'm, I know looking at the frequency what repeater I'm using I know looking at the frequency what frequency I'm using if that makes sense so that's another point of difference so this is sort of basically an upspec version um, slightly modified version of the FPC antennae which was already a decent radio so in the box here we've got the charger base which is 12 volts in and 8.4 volts out mains plugs also in the box this is a two pin so if you are using this in the UK or certain countries you may need an adapter and um, for this but the, the adapters are 10 a penny I've got thousands of them so and um, that's not going to be any issue and that just plugs into the back of the charging base we've got the belt clip here plastic belt clip with a metal bracket on the top in this bag here we've got the earpiece now this is quite nice it's a speaker mic earpiece but it has the braided cord on it so it's a little bit more substantial than some of the other ones that are just plastic it's got a, a woven cord around there so it's a bit more durable and then underneath here we've got these screws for the belt clip got a UHF antenna here, rubber duck style antenna so this is 400 to 480 megahertz so UHF and this is the same as the FPC antennae's antenna um, works um, fine in this bag here we've got the radio itself so as you can see it's the same as the FPC antennae on the outside and underneath we've got the battery which those of you who have um, 
both Feng UV82s, you'll see the similarity in the battery there. So if we just look at the radio, we can see it's got the frequency range. So it's 400 to 470 megahertz. So the antenna is 400 to 480 megahertz, but the radio is 400 to 470 megahertz, which is quite standard. Um, no one should be operating up 470 megahertz anyway, especially not in the UK. So um, this is great for um, amateur radio use. Voltage 7.4 volts and the RF output is around 5 watts and then the battery is a 3.7 volt 1500 milliamp hour lithium ion cell so 1500 milliamp hour is quite reasonable for um, these sorts of radios and then that just slides on the back and it just clips into place like so. The antenna just screws on the top there And then we'll just put the belt clip on. Okay, so the belt clip just screws in place. We've got the screws here and the belt clip itself. Okay, so just looking at the radio itself in a bit more detail, we've got a PTT button here. We've got a open squelch button there and we've got a scan button on the side. On the front we've got the little LCD screen, we've got a menu button, exit and lock button, the group and OK button, so the OK is for the menus, group is the PTT, and then we've got up and down buttons there for the menus. On this side we've got the speaker mic port, and this takes a standard Bofeng style Kenwood speaker um, plug, so um, programming cable for this is the same as your Bofeng cable or the other Samcom radio cable so that's not going to be any issue there's no obscure cable or driver for that it's just the Bofeng style ones and that's just um, sealed there behind that rubber cap on the back we've got the battery contacts and obviously the belt clip and we've got the release buttons there for the battery so the battery just slides out and then slides back in on the top we've got the LED indicator there for transmit and receive We've got the on off and volume button, uh, knob sorry, and then we've got the channel select switch. So if we just turn the radio on, you can see there there's already a difference between the original Samcom radios. So the LED is a different colour, so the screen's a different colour, and of course we've got just the channel readout on the uh, on the screen there. So that's the uh, that's one point of difference. Radio itself is styled um, almost identical. A little bit more detail on the side, but the styling on these radios is virtually the same. So menu options. If we click on menu, we've got CTCSS there, so we can trans. Uh, we've got the transmit and receive CTCSS that you can turn on or off. We've got the group function, so what you can do there is you can turn group um, on or off and you can select your group channel. So I've got mine set to channel 12. Vox settings for voice activated transmit. Squelch level. Beep, so that's the keypad beep. Compander, so that's basically voice compression. So we'll just keep that turned to off. And then finally scrambler, so there's a scrambler function on this which we'll, we'll probably do a test of in a little while. And that's it for menus, so you can just come out of that by pressing exit. We've got the keypad lock button there, so if you just hold the exit button, that will activate the keypad lock, so you can't press any keys other than the group, which will activate the secondary PTT. And then to change frequency, you just use the rotary encoder on the top to go through the channels that you've programmed in. So there's no actual VFO on this, so you can't manually input a frequency or select a frequency. It is programmable only, but that's handy for using these in like a security or a work environment. So you don't want your colleagues going off on different frequencies. They can just operate the channels. And for amateur radio use, it's straightforward because you can just program in anything you need anyway. So I've got some repeaters programmed in here, and I've also got some simplex channels programmed in. And that's that's all I need. So that's uh, having a, no VFO is no great detriment because, as I say, these are fully programmable. So what we'll do now is we'll have a quick look at the programming software. Okay, so this is the programming software here. As you'll see, it's a straightforward spreadsheet type programming software. And one thing to note, it's exactly the same as the FPCN 10A programming software. So there's no additional software to download. Just use the original FPCN 10A um, programming software. 
and the radio just plugs into your computer or laptop via the um, Bofeng or Kenwood style programming cables so there's no special chipsets or anything like that just use a Bofeng programming cable it's the same um, serial and uh, connector on both ends as the Bofeng radio so um, there's no complication there and you can get them for peanuts on the internet anyway so click on settings communication port make sure you're on the right communication port so we're on three and then just click OK and then what you're going to want to do first is read the radio because what a lot of people do is they buy radios from China and they just use them on the frequencies that they're supplied with and those frequencies aren't legal to use they're just test frequencies throughout the radio's coverage to test the output and to um, look for any harmonics um, spurious harmonics and things like that to make sure that they're not giving out a load of crap now say what you will about quality control out of China um, these tests do actually go on despite some 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 radios from some manufacturers aren't great on harmonics and interference and things like that but they are tested at the factory to make sure that they output the right power and output on the right frequency so don't transmit on those frequencies if we read this radio which i already have done it came up with a selection of frequencies three sorry a selection of frequencies between 400 and 470 megahertz which were just used for testing so you can't transmit on them so what we're going to do is just click on read and that will let us know what's inside the radio now I have already programmed this um, anyway so I'll just show you that okay so you can see here I've got some repeaters programmed in and I've got some simplex channels programmed in so programming repeater is as simple as putting the receive frequency in so that's the repeaters output transmit frequency that's the repeaters input we don't need to receive CTCSS or DCS tone for a repeater, but we do need to transmit CTCSS tone. So in this case, it's 82.5, and you can just select your CTCSS and DCS tones there. And then the um, band, so we'll just keep that at 12.5 KCs. So that's a repeater. Simplex channel is exactly the same, but we don't need a CTCSS unless you want one. And the output and input frequencies are exactly the same because it's a simplex channel. Settings on the side, we've got the radio settings there, so they do do a, a VHF version of this, but I've got the UHF version, 400 to 470. Timeout timer, you can select the amount of seconds before the radio times out, I've just got that set to off. Vox level will keep to off, but that's for voice activated transmission. Squelch level will just keep to its lowest at 1. Uh, group, so the group channel, so basically if I press the group button on the radio, it will transmit on channel 12. So if the radio is on channel 1, it will transmit there, but if I press the group button, it will transmit over on channel 12. Serial number we don't need to do anything with, and the user ID you don't need to do anything with at all. Once you've done that, just click on write, and that will write the data to the radio. And once that's done, it'll say programmed successfully and you can just unplug the radio and you're good to go. Okay guys, so I've got Chris, a um, good friend of mine, M0OGG. He's down um, about five miles away from me. He's running off his base station radio because he's just about to nip out. So I've just asked him to run in his shack quick. So I usually get him at five miles on a handheld anyway, but he's going to come um, come over on the... Uh, base station radio with his antenna on the roof but it'll just give us an indication anyway um, that the radio is working okay we will do a longer range test on this at some point so I'm going to give him a call now I'm just using a little speaker mic this little speaker mic here um, just so I can put it near the microphone that I'm recording this uh, voice over off it'll just allow you to hear the sound a little bit better hopefully um, I've not used this microphone properly before I've only ever tested it so we'll see how that one goes as well yeah, no worries, Chris. Right, I'm um, using the Samcom FPCN 30A. I'm just sat in the shack. Uh, obviously, you've done tests with me before. Uh, you're about five miles away, line of sight. Uh, I'm just using a speaker microphone, so the main microphone in the shack can, can pick this up for the video. How's it sounding, M3HHY? Right, is that any better now, Chris? M three H H Y. Yeah, I think I was talk. I was talk. I'm using a little speaker mic, and it's quite sensitive, so I was talking right into it. Um, yeah, well, you've five, five, and eight up this side um, anyway, so that's uh, that's good. What are you doing today? You say you're going to the Christmas markets. Uh, just for information as well, you're 5'9 and we'll make 59. Uh, 
Yeah, the audio is fine, Lewis. Just running 5 watts at the moment with an FTM 100 and a call in here. About 25 foot in the air. M0 or oh, cheat cheat. Yeah, no worries, Chris. That's uh, that's good, decently. So we know it's working anyway. It's quite um, it's quite interesting when you're on the handheld. There's not much difference in your signal to me either. Um, so that's good. We'll have to try that another time. All right, Chris. Well, no worries. I'll let you get off. Enjoy the rest of your day, and um, we'll catch you further down the log. Seven three for now. M three H H Y. I did actually show you what my whoops on um, from the kitchen first, but I don't think you heard me. I'll give you another shout now, and if you don't hear me. I'll say some treasure. Yeah, no worries, Chris. Um, I'm down in the shack. Usually I get you up at the house um, on that. But yeah, give it a go. If not, 7-3. Bring us something nice back from the Christmas markets as well. Okay, guys. So not a bad little contact there with Chris. Uh, I know he was on his base station radio. Um, I do hear him on his handheld from where he is. He's only four or five miles away from me. So it's, he's handy for testing. We'll do a longer range test on this radio at some point as well. Okay, while we've got the radio out, we'll just do a quick repeater test as well on one of the local repeaters. It's quite a local one, as I say, it's only around 8 and 9 miles away, so not far at all, but it'll just uh, give us some indication how um, we're getting into that repeater. M3HHY, listening PZ for radio report. Yeah, cheers, Mike. I'm just using a speaker mic. I don't know if that's any better. Um, I'm just testing out a radio, just seeing if, uh, if we'll get into the box. Okay. G0 UKM M3 HHY. Name's Lewis in Stockport. Alright, HHY, G0 UKM. Okay, Lewis, there you go. I, uh, I, I was, in fact, I'm on a speaker mic myself. I have been a speaker mic user for donkey's years. I'm on SC60 in the house. I do have an 8900. Yep, no worries, Mike. We'll chase coming back to the report anyway. Much appreciated. And um, we'll catch you further down the log. Enjoy the rest of your day. 7 3 for now. M3 HHY. Just while I've got the mic, there was somebody um, somebody keying up underneath your mic. There's another station on the side wanting to come in. No, never mind. 7-3. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Samcom FPCN 30A. I'm sure you'll agree it's a step forward from the FPCN 10A. Uh, the 10A was already a fantastic radio anyway, but I think the um, addition of the frequency readout on here rather than just the channels definitely a positive, and the increased couple of watts to 5 watts is definitely um, an added bonus as well. Um, styling very, very similar, but it's just uh, the internals on this radio which have changed, and I look forward to seeing what else is coming from Samcom soon because they, they seem to be um, bringing out some quite decent radios. For those of you who watched the original videos, the little intercom system, which I'll just grab, is really nice. Um, definitely a, a nice little bit of kit, handy for, for work and for you know just playing around within the shack. So, yeah, some nice stuff coming from Samcom. And as you can see, it performs decently on the air as well. Um, okay, guys, if you have any comments, suggestions or questions, then drop them in the box below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And we'll catch you in the next one. 7-3, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.